Thanks for tuning in this episode of Channel Surfing. Today I want to talk about VHF radio. Um, it's a, the radio is an extremely important piece of equipment to have on the board, I, I have on have on the boat. I would not go to sea without a radio on my boat in salt water specifically. <clears throat> so, uh, but uh, there's lots of channels. Um, what channels do I pay attention to? Uh, how do I have my radio configured? We're going to go over all of that in this video. So without any further ado, let's get started. On channel surfing, uh, the boat came with a, how is this, it's a standard Horizon uh, 1850GX. Uh, it's a, the radio the factory deployed. Um, <coughs> It's a, it's a fantastic radio, Standard Horizon makes really good radios. Um, it's worked well. The thing I didn't like about the radio initially was that it's located right here, which is hard um, to hit the, the, the numbers and stuff. Being that the radio's here, if I'm driving the boat, trying to get down here to push the buttons and all that is somewhat challenging. The other thing is I also found that it was a little bit difficult to hear sometimes. Uh, radio transmission isn't always um, fantastic based on who's transmitting and how far away they are. So an external microphone I thought would be really cool. And uh, one of the best things I did was actually this. This right here. So this is, it's, a, it's called a RAM 4. It's a remote access mic. Uh, and it's a fully featured VHO. This actually is an extension. It plugs into the back of my main radio. But it gives me all the buttons on here. It's a microphone that's on here. It's a speaker that's on here, so I can hold this up to my ear. I can I can drive and use all the buttons right there um, on it. And also, it has a different volume for it. And it hangs, I put it here in the aisle way so that the uh, Lazina could actually hear the radio. Maybe I miss it and she can hear it. All right, so it, it's been a pretty good uh, addition. It's like having a second radio without actually having a second radio. So um, that that really uh, was really nice. I mean, I just thought a lot of real estate, you know, to put second, third radio. I also keep a spare handheld. Um, handheld's great for being out on the dinghy, uh, leaving the boat. That way, I can communicate back to the boat, um, for example. And it's also uh, um, good if you're traveling with somebody else to have two radios. Because usually, if I'm traveling in a group, I'll leave the um, handheld. So I'll flip it up here. It'll sit like that while I drive, um, and that way this is dedicated to the group that I'm traveling with. We'll usually monitor channel 72 and talk on that, and that way it frees up the main radio um, to pay attention to the important channels. So what are the important channels? What is it I pay attention to, right? Well, channel 16 is your uh, hailing and distress. So you're not supposed to have any real conversations on there. It's meant for calling maydays, talk to the Coast Guard for for help um, or if you want to hail another vessel you know and then as soon as they acknowledge you then you tell them what channel you want to switch to you know channel 6 8 and 72 are popular uh, recreational channels to talk on um, however um, channel 9 is the new hailing um, channel so if you want to hail somebody you're supposed to do it on channel 9 so everybody's supposed to monitor channel 9 and channel 16. So how do you do that? Well, your radio, all radios, um, DHF radios have a scan function. So um, you go through and you configure your radio to scan channels. So it continually loops looking at each channel, listening for something um, of interest. So uh, what channels do I scan in total? So I always scan channel nine because that's the new hailing channel. I always scan channel 16 because that's hailing in distress and Coast Guard. Uh, channel 22, right, is what the Coast Guard will will shift over to for their communications. So oftentimes the Coast Guard may say on Channel 16, they've got a security announcement, you know, um, tune in to Channel 22 Alpha for more information, right? And then they'll broadcast a bunch of stuff on Channel 22 Alpha. Uh, so I always scan Channel 9, Channel 16, Channel 22. At a minimum, I always have those going. Now, because I'm up at Dagmar's and there's a train bridge I got to get under, the train bridge, uh, it's actually bridge 37 is the number of it. So I got to talk to the bridge operator if he's closed to say, hey, I see you're closed. You know, um, are you able to open? Um, bridges are on channel 13. So I always scan channel 13 as well. 
uh, for doing that. And then um, because I often travel with the group and I have a lot of friends on the water, um, I always scan channel 72. That's the channel that I usually will go to, um, you know, for recreational traffic with a group I'm traveling with. Uh, and then channel 68 also, right? A lot of fishermen and stuff like to talk on channel 68. So I'm out fishing and, you know, I hear the fishermen, they want to switch to channel 68 or something. I'll pick up all of that crosstalk. So the channels I'm always scanning, if you want to take note of this, channel 9 and 16 for hailing, channel 22 for the Coast Guard, channel 13 for bridges, and then channel 6, 8, and 72. So with me driving, if you guys ever saw me out in the waterway, you know, wanted to hail me, you could just hail me straight on channel 72 and my radio will pick it up because I'm always scanning um, all these channels. So another thing um, I'd like to bring up too is, I mean, the radio is a safety component on the boat. Uh, it's safety gear. That's why I don't want my radio to be really complicated to operate. I want to be able to have my mom come on the boat for, you know, um, you know, fun boat cruise, go out crabbing, that kind of stuff. But if something was to happen, if I had a heart attack, if I fell over or something like that, I want anybody to be able to pick up the handset, press a button, right, and all of a sudden start talking. Well, the easiest way to do that, well, now let's say there was a distress, um, and you want to send a signal. I'll show it on this one. It's the same on the other radio. So there's a distress button on the back right here. It'll pull a little flap up, and then you hit that button, right? And the handheld that I've got is a Standard Horizon HX890 radio. It's also got a DSC button on the back as well. Right there, you flip that up and you push that button. In order for that DSC, it's, it stands for digital, um, digital signal calling. In order for, the, in order for that, that uh, button to work, you've got to get an, what's known as an MMSI number. Uh, in English, it's like a phone number for the boat. That's really what it is. It's a unique number that gets assigned to the boat. It stays with the boat. If you sell the boat, the MMSI number is supposed to go with the boat. Um, two agencies issue them. Boat US will do one for um, for basically free, but that's all, that'll only work within the United States. Um, or um, if you go to the FCC, they charge I think it's a little over two hundred dollars for ten years for an MMSI number. But then the then your number works when you're in um, Canada. Now what I mean by works is um, <clears throat> because I have an MMSI pro number programmed. And I've got the FCC number that, or an FCC issued number. I hit that DSC button. All I did was press the one button. It will digitally send out an SOS. Basically, all the boats in the neighborhood will hear that on their radios. The Coast Guard will hear that. They will know the MMSI number. They will know my GPS position. And the Coast Guard has access to the database on the back end that will know my name, my phone number, the type of boat, make of the boat, color of the boat. Uh, uh, how many people are usually on the boat? Um, I have my cell phone number uh, on there. It just it gives them all that information without me having to say a thing. So it speeds up all that. Um, uh, another thing to keep in mind too is on your chart plotter, right? So I want to show this. On the chart plotter, there's an SOS button here. Click that, and then say, "What do I have?" Let's say I have a fire on board. It tells you what to say. And more importantly, it shows your position of what to read off right away. Latitude and longitude. That way you don't have to fumble trying to, f trying to figure all of that out. <clears throat> so if you're having flooding, it'll show you some data. It's got the MMSI number blank here, and I think that's because um, I don't have a Garmin radio with an MMSI with a, um, <clears throat> or a Garmin AIS to be able to broadcast the MMSI number to the chart plotter. But... To mitigate that, I keep my MMSI number written down right there. So, uh, pretty useful. Um, <clears throat> so, so let's say recap. So, uh, configure your radio to scan channels at a minimum, channels 9, 16, and 22. Um, and then a recreational channel, 6, 8, or 7, 2, um, is also good to, to scan. And that's it. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, click the screen to watch another.